Good morning, it's Sandy Welch, and welcome to Sunday Morning Moments and Better and Better. And I'm excited that you are joining me this morning. This morning we're going to be talking about doubting ourselves. Do you doubt yourself? Do you feel like, you know, I'm just not good enough. I just am not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not cute enough. I'm not young enough. Whatever it might be. Where you put yourself in a place of self-doubt. Where you don't have the kind of confidence that you wish you had. And it really, because you don't have that confidence, takes away your power. Are you in that place? Are you in a place where you are not feeling confident and strong? And because of that, it really puts you in a place of struggle. We're going to talk this morning the three things to do to help you get to a place very fast, very quick, and it's going to be an exercise that you can do. You can watch this video again the next time and actually take it as a kind of a workbook exercise. Get out a piece of paper and do it because this it's really critical that you become confident. It's critical that you become confident because our confidence, boy, it's everything, honestly. When you do not believe in yourself, you just don't do what you should do. So if this if this video blesses you, please like it. If you're on my YouTube channel, please um, click subscribe, ring the little bell so you get my notifications. If you're on YouTube, please make sure that you um, catch me live. Set the change your settings so that you catch me live as soon as I go live. So I can't wait for us to get started. So here it goes. Um, do you doubt yourself? Um, do maybe kind of go through this little. Um, two-part question with yourself, first of all, to kind of see where is it coming from? Um, is it, do I doubt myself and my abilities and my timing and everything, or do I really doubt that God is strong enough to make this thing happen that I want to have happen? Um, it, I re I've been reading a book, and part of the book talks about the fact that when I don't believe in myself, it's kind of like I'm really not believing in God, and I kind of I'm not believing in who God is to make it happen. I kind of agree with that in one way, but there's been a big part of my life where I am a Christian and I am a believer, and I do know who God is, and I do believe that He is powerful. He is awesome. He is my Creator. I believe He made me. I believe He designed me. I believe that He has all power. I believe that He is present everywhere. I believe that He could He created this universe simply by stating it into existence, and. Because of that, I have no doubt whatsoever about who he is. So I really don't believe that my doubt is in him. I believe my doubt is in me, that he would pick me, that he has chosen me, that he has done this and called me to do this thing that I really want to do, but I'm not doing it because of whatever my self-doubt is. So maybe you need to review that and decide, well, is it because I'm not believing about who God is and his strength and power, or is it really because I believe that, but I just am, just don't believe that I'm the one he wants to do this, or that I'm the one that's good enough to do this. So, look at that and decide, and I'll tell you the, the real problem that I see for myself and that I see for most people is that it really is the fact that I'm viewing myself in a small way. That I'm viewing myself as um, a grasshopper. As a person who has not um, gotten strong. That, that even though I may believe that I'm strong and that I'm powerful, at this point in my journey about this thing, I may feel like I'm not. And the doubt rolls in as it wants. We struggle to have confidence in our life because the doubt rolls in sometimes in very unexpected ways and unexpected timings. Um, but the doubt rolls in. And when the doubt rolls in, what is it about myself that I am believing at that point in time? Here it is, something I want to do, something I believe I'm supposed to do, something I'm confident that I am supposed to do. But the doubt rolls in and I question myself and my abilities and my strength and my own power. And the thing is, sometimes 
We want to do things we're not supposed to do, and we're just frail, imperfect people. That's just the truth. Because of our imperfection, sometimes we think, well, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. Maybe because I'm having this struggle, I shouldn't do it. Maybe I'm thinking wrong. Well, let me just say this to you. If you really believe that God has called you to something and you're supposed to be doing it right now, for the doubt to roll in is just part of your humanity. When that doubt rolls in, that's just our humanity saying, I am imperfect. Am I thinking wrong? Is this the wrong time? Am I forgetting about the things that I should be doing? Am I confused? Am I unsure? Take a deep breath. And know that if you're just dealing with your imperfection and your humanity, that's just a fact of life. That you are in that you are human, that you are imperfect. But nonetheless, nonetheless, if God has called me to do something today, then I must go forth and move on it and attack it and be a person of motion and forward progress. That is my calling. Not that I sit still and become in this downward spiral of inactivity and um and of doubt. I'm supposed to be moving forward. That's how God made us to be creatures of movement, moving forward. So why am I not moving forward? Why am I in this kind of stuck place where I want to do something, but I'm not in action doing it? That fear, that self-doubt seriously will put you into inactivity. And anytime you want to be doing something and you find yourself not doing it, hesitating and procrastinating and making excuses... You probably are supposed to go do it, but you're just in that humanity area of not good enough. So let's talk about what do you do? What do you do when you believe that? So let me ask you this. I want you to kind of pretend you have two pieces of paper. When you leave off of here, you can come back and watch it again and get your piece of paper. On the left side, I want you to say, okay, so this is the thing I want to do. How am I feeling about myself? How am I thinking? What are the thoughts that are running through my mind about myself? Okay. Um, for instance, I'll do money. If you feel like I don't have enough money, I never have enough money. What's wrong with me about money? I'm, so you say, I need more money. I want more money. I've got opportunities to make big money, but I'm not doing it. Why am I not doing it? So that's just one illustration. Yours could be any topic that you want. So left side of the paper. What am I thinking right now? You have to identify the thoughts you're thinking because the scripture says, as a man thinks, so is he. And if you're in an activity, that's what you're thinking. If you're afraid, you're afraid because that's what you've been thinking. If you are um, hesitating, it's because of something you're thinking. If you're going and in action and moving and shaking and forward and confident and going forward, that's what you've been thinking. So what you've been thinking, what you've been thinking. So the left side of the paper, write down what you've been thinking. For instance, if I took a money story, and that's where I kind of always tell everybody to start first with your money story, because it's common to everybody. We all need money. We either have enough or we don't have enough. We've had a lifetime of having enough or a lifetime of not having enough. We have to deal with it. On the left side of the paper, what do you do? I'm not a good money manager. I'm a terrible money manager. I never have enough money. At the end of every month, I never have enough money. I want to help people, but I never have enough money. I'm a good giver, and I know God's going to take care of me. Um, I make t bad money decisions all day long, every day. I've had a lifetime of making bad dis money decisions. If God gave me a lot of money, I don't know that I would be trustworthy in it. Do you hear all these thoughts you're thinking? All these thoughts you're thinking. All these thoughts you're thinking. And you have to um, write them down because you can't do like I did for years. I was an ostrich. Have you ever had the ostrich syndrome where you're thinking about stuff and you just say, oh, I can't think about that right now, and you stick your head in the sand? When you stick your head in the sand and you have that ostrich syndrome, you never get better. You only get better when you breathe and say, okay, on this left side of the paper, I'm going to write everything I'm thinking. Good things, bad things, indifferent things. Everything my mama told me, my daddy told me, my grandmama told me, my second grade teacher told me. Everything I believe about whatever this topic is that I'm struggling in. And so on this left side of the paper, you have all of these thoughts, like the ones I just talked about with money. And you have to look at them and you have to analyze them and say, are they good? Are they bad? How do you know if they're good or bad? Well, I'm a, because I believe the scripture, the scripture has a thinking test in it. 
It says, do you want to know what to think on? You think on these things, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of a good report, things that are honorable. Those are the things you think on. And if they don't match all that whole thinking test, then you don't get to dwell on it and think on it. Sure, it may come across your brain. It may go between these six inches, but you can't let it get stuck there. You have to move it out and you have to say, well, I just thought that thought and it made me sad. So now I'm getting rid of that thought because that thought did not encourage me. It did not lift me. It did not give me energy to move forward and do greater things. So therefore... I can't think on it. So therefore, I have to think a new thought. So you look at all those thoughts on the left side of your paper and you say, what in the world? No wonder I'm discouraged. No wonder I'm stuck because that's the stinking stuff I've been thinking about. So you look at it and you say, well, that thought was positive. Put a plus sign by it. That thought is negative, put a minus by it. But sometimes we don't know what to put by it, plus or minus, because it's true. <laughs> and we think, well, because it's true, I get to think on it. No, 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 no. Just because it's true, that simply means it's true. But it doesn't mean you get to think on it simply because it's true. Because it's true, then you have to go and check the rest of the thinking test. You should think about things that are true. But is it a good report? Does it give you courage? Is it honorable? Is it lovely? Does it build you up? Does it build others up? If it doesn't, even if it's true, you can't dwell on it. You can't think on it. You have to replace it with something else. Okay, so now we've got this list of things that are really like good and bad and they just press me and now I'm discouraged because I'm thinking about this thing. What kind of a terrible person am I? No, we're humans. You look at this list and you say to yourself, wow, this is why I'm in this stuck place. And then, then you have to decide, if I do not change these thoughts, I will be thinking these same thoughts tomorrow. Because I've been thinking these thoughts for a lot of my life. And I'm thinking them today. And tomorrow when I wake up, I'm going to be thinking them tomorrow and the next day. So I have to take these thoughts that are good and keep them. And I have to take these thoughts that are not a good report. Do not encourage me. Do not lift me. Are not love. These thoughts are not love. They're not honorable. They're not a good report. I can't think on them. So how do you get a new thought? You have to, and I'm just going to tell you from my perspective. You have to sit down somewhere still and quiet. You have to get by yourself, and that's what I call a get with Jesus moment. You have to get by yourself, and you have to turn on some soft background nature music, you have, or go to the ocean, which is the greatest nature music there is, and you have to sit there, close your eyes, block out everything else, and you have to dream, and you have to think about, what do I really want my life to look like? What do I really want my life to feel like? What do I really want my life to be? Who do I want to be? What do I want my life to look like? And this is what I believe. I believe that God the Creator has placed within you gifts and talents and abilities that He really wants you to use and bless the world with and give to the world. And if you stay in that stuck place, that giftedness and those talents and those abilities, your strengths are never going to shine out into the world. For you to make those talents and gifts and abilities shine forth out into the world, you've got to believe. You've got to believe that who you are is enough right here and right now to start today to do everything that God's called you to do. Everything that God the designer and the creator of this world in your life has planned for you and gifted you for, you are more than good enough right here and right now. So for instance, if you say to yourself, I'm a terrible money manager, I make bad money decisions every day, then you, you, and, you and God got to say, God, please help me. I had so many bad decisions in my life, and I got this thing I've been thinking that I'm a bad money manager, and I know I am a bad money manager. I've been a bad money manager a long time, but I have to release that, and I have to let it go. God, help me to, sh help me to see that if you show up and you help me, and I show up with my best self, with my best self, and let's say it's two years from now, I'm showing up 
with my best self, you show up. What is my life going to look like in two years if we're together showing up and I'm at my best self? What do you want my life to look like in two years? And you close your eyes and you dream and you see that I'm making good money decisions. I am saving money. I have a huge bank account. I've got three months of savings put back. I have... You, and you just go on and you go on and you go on and you dream and you feel it. And I can tell you this, if you and God can get that dream to surface to your the top of your soul and your spirit, then you can make it happen. If God and you will pull that dream out of the bottom of the pit of the darkness and you will bring it up and let it come to light and you will say, that is is what my life is going to look like. That is who I am. That is what I want to be. And then you get that pencil and you look at the sentence that says, I'm a terrible money manager. And then you on the right hand side of the paper, you say, I'm changing that. That was then. And this is now on the right hand side of the paper. I'm when that sentence comes up and comes in my brain and tries to stay there and tell me that I'm a bad money manager. I'm going to say, mm -mm -mm. that was then. And this is now because I am a good money manager. I make good money decisions every day. I have three months of savings put back. And you just write the sentences of faith. Faith simply means I believe it's going to happen. It, ha has, it hasn't happened yet. But I believe that it's already happened and I'm just making the journey to it. Because that's what faith is. It is done even though it's not done. So can you believe some things are done that aren't done yet? That's faith. Write it down. Write it down. Believe it in your soul and let it come up into your spirit and bubble up and make you cry and make you get so excited and create enormous faith in you so that when that negative sentence comes up that you've been thinking that thought, you can capture it and say, ah, that was then and this is now. I am, and you say those faith sentences with the words beginning in I am, because that tells your brain, this is what I believe about who I am today and tomorrow and the next day and forever. And what happens is your brain will get retrained. Your brain will still believe those old sentences that you've been thinking for your whole life. But when they come up and you can feel it, and you can capture it and say, that was then, and this is now, and then come back and say, brain, I want you to know, I'm good. Me and God, we got this. I am strong. I am powerful. I am a good money manager. I am making good money decisions every day. I am a saving beast. I am the man of the hour on the savings train. Whatever your faith sentences are, emotionally connect with them and talk back. If you're like me, I did not talk back to my mom and daddy. But girlfriend and boyfriend right here and right now, you better be talking back to your brain. Because your brain believes what you tell it. It believe, And the thoughts that you've thought for years, they will not go away in a day. But I can tell you, they will go away and you will begin to tell yourself, I am good enough right here and right now to do everything that I've been called to do. I am good enough right here and right now to do everything I've been destined to do today. And your brain will begin to shift and it will begin to help you believe the statements of faith if you will continue to bring them up and replace the old with the new. Because guess what? You are an amazing creature creation. You are a creature who has been designed with gifts and talents. And everything that God wants you to do in its brilliance and its enormity and its hugeness and its scariness, you are able to do. Right here and right now today, you can do everything you're supposed to do today. And when tomorrow comes, you're going to be even better. And you're going to be good enough, strong enough, smart enough, tall enough, cute enough, wise enough to make good decisions tomorrow. Go forth and conquer. I am good enough right here and right now to do everything I've been called to do. 
I hope you have a great day. Please like the video on Facebook and share it if you're on Facebook. And if you're on YouTube or click my YouTube link up here, please um, subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell so you get my notifications. Much love to you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.